Okay, here's the agenda for tonight. Okay, we're going to do a meeting first. That's what we're doing now. We're going to do a quick equipment inspection. Basically, check your car, check your cameras, check your radios, make sure everything works. And then we're going to roll out probably till around 2. That's what we've typically been doing. And we're going to place an order for pizza and then come back here and have a little debrief, I guess. What is UTC? Oh, until completed. Oh, okay. I thought it was universal time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. Time because okay. UTC. Okay. Slide. Two o'clock UTC already happened, probably. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> here's how we're going to organize. I guess uh, I'll be car one. So you want to put me down for one, James? You want to roll with me, Derek? I'm rolling with you. Woo! Kyle, you want to roll with me? Yeah. Okay, would you put Derek as two and Kyle as three? If you use the radio, your call sign is going to be Alpha 2. Alright. Alpha 3. I'm sorry, you're Alpha 3. Hey, is someone else driving tonight? Maybe Ian? Ian. Well, if someone's pulling up, maybe we got another driver. Well, I guess, are you going to get in my car then, Garrett? Possibly. I wouldn't be against uh, the patrol idea. Okay, we'll, we'll take you to the square and then drop you off. If I had a bike light, I wouldn't mind biking. You can borrow mine if you want to. Uh, will the people on foot patrol be oh, Cecilia like and F1? Yeah, let's put, F3. yeah, that's a great idea. Foxtrot 1. Where? At the very bottom. Oh. Yes. You! F1 or Fox? Okay. Or just put Fox. <coughs> Unless you want to roll with Cecilia. Cecilia, are you driving? Jay's driving. Okay. Did you write Jay for one? Uh, is he going to be K. part two? Yeah, bravo. Okay, we got uh, Daryl and Steve as dispatch. And then Ryan. I guess Ryan will roll out with me. <laughs> right. Is that fine? Okay, I got some notepads. I, I probably should have handed them out uh, if anyone wants to take notes. And a pen if you want a pen. Okay, I also have business cards. Like you can come grab some at the end of this presentation. Basically, some top lot cards. You know, if someone asks you what you're doing, just hand them that or tell them. Top lot. I press R bands if everyone wants to wear one. You get that too. Uh, and then I have maps. If anyone wants a map that has some landmarks on it. I'm pretty sure all of you are familiar with the area, but I'm going to take a map. And then t-shirts. Rapture has loaned us two t-shirts. If anyone wants to wear t-shirts, they're extra large. That's the option. He claims they're laundered. Okay, slide please. <laughs> okay, tonight the weather is going to be fairly good. It's going to be 68 high, 66 low. It's going to be very humid, so it should be warm. It's a low chance of rain, so... I have for today or last week? That's for today. I have two umbrellas in the back of my car if we need it. And then it's partly cloudy, so maybe the moon's not, it's like a half moon, and there's going to be some clouds, so that could be bad for lighting. Okay, slide please. Okay, here's Keen. I put three landmarks on it. We have the square, that's an important landmark. Cumbies. That's going to be our primary resupply point. And then King State College. Last week, the action was mainly on Winchester Street and then also on Main. Winchester was so key last week, so I suspect it'll be that way again. Okay, slide. Okay, here are the King police, the people we're probably going to most likely encounter. Uh, their headquarters is off of Marlboro Street. So if you drive down to the roundabout and then head down Marlboro, that's where their headquarters is, and I have some pictures of them. And like every other picture, if you Google image Keen Cop Lock, it's Derek. <laughs> or Keen PD. Yeah. And here's their little symbol. Uh, they mainly roll out in cars and bikes. I've not seen any patrol cars with two officers, but I have seen two bikes riding together. And they use their radios like if something goes down, they quickly respond. Okay, a slide. Okay, their most dangerous course of action, obviously, is arrest. Uh, Derek's going to cover 
some contingency on what to do if you're arrested. Uh, slide. Okay, here's the other folks to worry about. Uh, King State College Campus Safety. They were somewhat active last week. I did not, I saw one Cheshire County Sheriff last Friday. He pulled someone over uh, near college. And I only saw the state troopers driving around. I didn't see them next year. Did anyone see them do anything in King? I just saw them driving, but the sheriffs were definitely a lot more active. Like there was. There I mean, I saw one pullover. I saw them driving a lot. Yeah, I think we saw more than one interaction okay. with the sheriffs. They were like at first we were like, are they the only ones that are out tonight? And then we started seeing King cops more. Okay. Okay. Sure. So um, technically closes the day. Campus safety are not police. They don't okay. have powers of arrest. They can't detain you. That's just, good to know. <laughs> just if, the, if you're on the campus and they're pestering you, just leave the campus. Okay. If, you know, they, if they They'll call, call Keen PD. Yeah. So that, that's why they called Keen PD last week then? Yeah. Okay. They, they're, they're, they're totally useless. They're unarmed. They're, uh, they're, they're not they're they're on powers of arrest. <laughs> they're basically like, security guards. Okay. Yeah. That's a joke. But. Uh, slide. Okay, we have the locals. You know, mainly comprises of two groups. You have the people that actually live here, and then you have the college kids. <laughs> and I put on there, you have to be really careful driving around them. Last week, it, you have to really pay attention. If you see anyone walking, especially the college kids, like, be ready to stop. Last week, I almost hit two people. They, like, fall into the road. Well, I have a yeah, video I'm going to show you. One runs out in front of me. We watched Dawn of the Dead uh, the other night, uh, the other, like a week ago, and then I went out to go get something to eat, and I, I, I thought the zombie apocalypse was really happening because there's a bunch of people walking around, and, and I realized, oh, they're just drunk college kids. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen more of a collection of drunk people than I have in Keene than the people inside right there. Yeah, Winchester was, like, insane, too. There's so many people. Okay, yeah, slide. Okay, tonight, we're going to go out, conduct cop blocking, attempt to hold the police accountable, you know, in Keene. It's 9-7. Any questions? Okay, slide. Okay, mainly my idea of what we're going to do tonight, we focus on Main Street and Winchester Street, and you can follow the police. I like following them, like get behind them and record them running through stop signs and not using their blinker and, and speeding. I think the speed limit is 25 in Keene. Does that sound right? That's mm -hmm. only on like Main Street, on like Winchester Street and West Street. It usually changes to thirty. I think it's okay. uh, uh, I think it's twenty five unless otherwise posted. Okay. I think that's the statute or the. I I order. think it's no. I think it's only twenty five in like the downtown area, like Main Street. Yeah, I think there's a sign at the when you get into Kansas, it's thirty miles an hour everywhere, and it's supposed to be otherwise. Okay. Yeah, so you can follow my advice is to obey all the traffic laws to the best of your ability, but that's up to you. <laughs> okay, actions on encounter. Uh, ideally, we dismount, we spread out, we try to get multiple angles and film them. And the rally points, let's say we get separated or we need to link up. Okay, the primary is going to be Cumbies, and the secondary will be here, or the alternate. Okay, if a person does not want to be filmed, I, I guess it's up to you what you want to do. I'm personally not going to film them, but I'm just going to observe. Especially if they're being arrested. And you can also, like, maybe take notes. Like, have a notepad and just take notes on what's happening. And it's also coverage, too. If your camera's pointed at the ground, you're still getting audio coverage, and you can pick it back up at any second. That's true. Yeah, you could actually, I guess, like, put it in your pocket or... Yeah, because people feel a lot safer when you're, depending on the situation, if you're approaching them with the camera pointed at the ground, and then if you're the camera's pointed like at them in the encounter. Yeah, some people I asked last week, they were like, I don't want to be filmed. Don't film me. So... I know the way Ian asked, instead of, do you want me to film this, of, would you like somebody to keep an eye on the situation? Yeah, that's a good point. The language is very important. Or keep an eye on the cops for you. Maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you want us to keep an eye on the cops for you? They might, think, they might think you're talking to the cops. They might think you're undercover cops or yourselves or something. Like they don't know who the hell you are. Okay, slide, please. Okay, we're currently here. I'm not going to disclose this location. Basically, we're going to roll out. 
uh, I focus focus mainly on Main Street and Winchester. And if we get a call or you start following a cop, you can go where you want to. Okay, slide. All right. Can we go back? Yeah, go to back. That for a second. Uh, if me or Steve, either one, is giving out a dispatch and giving a location, if we say it's north of the street, then that means that you know if you're down like near 101 or Winchester North is obviously back towards the square. If you're somewhere up above the square, then keep going that way. South is obviously you want to the opposite. Of oh, this north. This, this is really convenient. <laughs> All right. You got a comment there, Steve? <laughs> yeah. Um, I I East used as away from the college. I use the phrase um, "never eat soggy walls." South Main Street <laughs> for uh, anything south of the Post Office Rotary, and I call North Main Street what we mostly think of as North uh, as Main Street. Or if I say Main Street, I mean this po portion of Main Street. If I say South Main Street. Yeah, I, I usually mean sorry, that. Sorry, Ryan. I usually mean that portion of Main Street because people don't realize that Main Street goes beyond that uh, roundabout sometimes. Um, uh, the other thing is doubling on the radio. Uh, if you have something to say to dispatch, please say dispatch. This is so and so. Uh, your unit number, and then I will acknowledge you, and then you speak. Uh, <laughs> because people are transmitting, they're in two different, they're, they're in two different locations. It's, it's just they're, the way you said it. <laughs> that was funny. All right, it, and, be called upon, and then you may speak. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's how this dispatch works. Yeah, because um, the, what was happening is there'd be one person on the far end of town that we were barely able to hear, and then somebody would just be like, "I see a cop. He's turning into." I don't know what street this is. <laughs> and I have to ask the person to repeat it again. So just, um, if, if, there, if you see something really going down, just say, you know, like when James was pulled over, you know, James says, break, 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 we have, we're getting pulled over in your cumbies. You know, um, if, if, you know, if there's an emergency situation, all the rules go out the window. But try not to, try to avoid, um, holding down the microphone for more than 30 seconds, like think about what you have to say and then try to summarize it in as few words as possible uh, before you, you, you say it. Um, so try to avoid ums. Short transmissions, only important things. Yeah, don't try like, to... I'm standing by this building waiting on something to happen is not important information. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, I don't want to hear any license plate numbers of cop cars anymore. It's irrelevant. I can't copy it and just try to get a description of the, the cop car. And if you're recording it, just say it into your camera microphone. So, so if you recognize which cop it is, can you just yeah, that's say fine. that? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I mean, just try to avoid too much radio chatter because there's only so much stuff we can keep up with. We're trying to listen. We're, our biggest concern is trying to listen to the scanner. And uh, we're also there to give, um, you know, look up information such as driving directions or whatever for you guys. Uh, that's our main concern because we can't, like, look up cop car license plates or anything like that. So. Mm -hmm. You got any more? Or and then what you were saying that most of the cars are fairly identified, like the Charger. There's more than one Charger. There's more than one Crown Vic. But, but like the new charger and the old charger. Yeah, um, they have different paint jobs. One's a canine unit and stuff like that. So just try to get a physical description of the cop car um, and, and try to summarize it as short as possible. Um, it doesn't really matter who's who. Okay, yeah, slide. Okay. Yeah, basically, as I mentioned, when you're driving, your primary act is driving, not talking on the radio, not filming. Uh, you got to be very careful, especially near the uh, college kids. Like, there's nothing that will end this quicker than having an accident while we're cop locking. Like, that would be such bad PR. Wouldn't even be funny. <laughs> and then, like I said, obey the traffic laws. That's my recommendation. You know, if there's a problem, like cameras always try to keep filming. 
Now, I like the buddy system. Like, you never should be alone cop locking. Like, if you're going to dismount or whatever, you should try to stay in pairs. But you can be, like, 30 feet away, you know, if you're filming something. Like, you just right now. Street. Yeah. But you, you know, definitely stay together. Okay, slide. Okay, uh, push, click. Yeah, click the button. This is me almost hitting a college person. <laughs> um, I might need to kill the lights for it to work. Okay, hold on one second. And hitting. Wow. <laughs> it looks like a zombie apocalypse. It was quick. <laughs> like, I barely had any time to stop or anything. Now, you played again, click it. Street, huh? Now, Winchester Street. That's where they walk right out. See, she just ran yeah, in front of me. It wasn't. It oh, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, and if the cops lose you because you're following them, okay, just don't worry about it. Just don't. Just. Go around in some other direction and pick some, pick up someone else. Yeah. And, uh, Did you want to say anything on this, Garrett, or you want me just to right. cover it? Filming. Um, it would be better a little bit if I had a tripod, but here's a monopod. Alright, so I can use this as an example. Um, if you're filming stuff, you can either get lost looking at the viewfinder, or get the camera like lost looking at the person like having really bad uh, video. So try and have your line of sight. You can see the frame as well as the thing in front of you. Uh, lighting. Be conscious of it. You can see in your viewfinder where there's good lighting, where there's bad lighting. Framing. Yeah, keep it in the frame. Different angles. That's part of spreading out. Um, not recording everything in a single file is for easier editing later for those who actually do that. I'd say something to be aware of is uh, if you care about the audio quality, you need to be pretty close. Um, however, distance also can antagonize people who don't want to be filmed, things like that. Where they might be comfortable if you're 15 feet away, but as soon as you get like 6 feet away or something, then they'll, I don't, why are you filming? So use judgment. Um, stability of this shot is like the number one thing that makes it look either like good footage or bad footage. So. Try and keep your thing, especially if you're walking, you need to consciously be keeping your hands stable while your feet are moving. Uh, so yeah, that's basic filming things. Derek, you um, film lots of things, any input? Don't get the same shot that someone else is getting. One, one thing, it's more of a vehicle operations thing, is uh, just if you have someone to, who's got a video camera in the car, sometimes it makes sense to just drop them and then drive a little bit down the street. Right. And um, that way, you avoid uh, you avoid harassment by you know them like go, focusing the direction on the car because it's much it's much more dangerous to be in the car than on foot. They can yeah they can detain you. Two other quick comments about video: get in close for audio because that can be really tough. You can hear someone better than the camera can, and don't be afraid of close-ups. Get in close. And then I'd like to add the advice that Ridley gives of have someone keep an eye on the people filming that way if anything happens with them. Especially if you have like seven people with cameras in one location. Just somebody sort of, you know, keep an eye on everybody else with a camera. Okay, slide. Okay, this is Gatwa. Um, this is basically if you spread up, you know, if you're going to separate for any reason, like let's say you're going from your car from four to two, you know, just a basic contingency plan, like here, I'm going here, Kyle's coming with me, you know, we'll meet up with you at Cumbies at, you know, 11.30. Uh, if we don't return, I want you to call my cell phone, and if you can't reach me on the cell phone, I want you to call dispatch. You know, if we encounter the police, we'll put it out on the radio. Alternatively, we'll cell phone call Dispatch, you know, just a basic contingency plan, like what you're going to do, you know, when you separate from people. And that sort of conversation does not need to happen on the radio. That's true. Yeah, in person. Okay, slide. This is whenever you're separating. Okay, our two main resupplies are, you know, Cumbies, Cumberland Farm, is a picture of it, and then here, the CAC. Okay, the medical plan. If we see an injury, I have a first aid kit, if it's a minor injury, or if someone gets injured in the back of my car. Okay, a major injury, you know, obviously we're either going to call an ambulance or take them to the hospital. 
and we're going to treat the most injured party first. So if the cop is the most injured, you treat him first. If the drunk college kid is the most injured, you treat him first. Like it doesn't matter who it is. Like you basically triage who you're going to treat. Who here knows first aid? Well, I know first aid. Okay. Are you still currently uh, certified? Because if not, they can sue you. Well, I hope the Samaritan laws will cover me, right? <laughs> I've not looked at New Hampshire's good Samaritan law. Well, if I see someone injured, I'm going to try to provide medical assistance if they want it. What if they're unconscious? Like if I witness a car accident, I'm going to stop. If it's something urgent, I'm going to I'm going to treat them. You know, I use my shirt as a bandage. I'll do whatever I have to. I rather provide aid and get sued than not provide aid. That's just me personally. Okay. Uh, any other comments on that? Well, thanks for stepping up to the plate on that, James, because <laughs> the little I know about medicine is enough to tell me I'm not messing with people who are injured. Okay, slide. Okay, the hospital, if you go from the square, just go down Court Street, up you know, you'll come to the hospital. That's technically up Court Street. Okay, yeah, up Court Street. Well, <laughs> there's no such thing as up or down from north or south. No one concept. Okay, well, anyway, slide. Okay, Steve got into this a little bit, or actually a lot. Okay, my idea, conceptually, like the drivers are the team leaders, so you're responsible for knowing like where the people are. You can obviously, you know, tell someone else they're in charge, but... Okay, uh, yeah, communications. Uh, we're going to, I guess, go on a channel 157000. Is that acceptable, Steve? One five seven zero zero. Yeah, just three zeros. The one that well, we, we had in the second was Or do yeah. you yeah. want to just use the one fifty six? Okay, we won't change it. Everyone's scared the same one seventy two. Yeah, I remember mean, there was some concern last week. Well, we were talking about radio. changing the frequency um, and not telling anybody until the meeting because no one came to the meeting last time. So. We were like, well, screw up. No one's going to pay attention. No one's just yeah, but what if somebody wanted to join in partway through? Then yeah. they couldn't hear it. Yeah. And they were yeah. left out. Now, like, if you guys need to do, like, personal chatter, then go to a different frequency would be fine. But just sort of be like, hey, uh, you know, go to 157. Yeah, 72 is, may, is supposed to be mostly just contact with dispatch. Um, we, we should program in these radios to have another channel on there. So. Okay, my idea on call signs, the car will be a letter, like Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. And then the person in the car will be a number. Well, I was thinking about having... <laughs> so this is Alpha 1 dispatch. I was thinking about having it the other way because there's more letters in the alphabet than there are numbers in the base 10. Numbers. Yeah, but do people know you're not going to have more than ten people in a car? What is well, you what is E? You know, you know, I was thinking about having every person have a letter alpha. and each car have a number because there's not going to be more than ten cars. Okay, we'll we'll try so, the letter number. If that doesn't work, we'll change it. Okay, our primary means of communication will be the radios, and then the secondary will be cell phones. I'd like the drivers at the minimum to get their cell phone numbers to, to Daryl and Steve. Yeah. Is dispatch going to have an audio recorder going at dispatch? Because I think that's a good idea to have all the radio communications. Um, possibly, probably not. I don't know. Will you I have recorder? one audio recorder I'm using right now. I was hoping to take that with me. I know Ian has, I think, an audio recorder. We could record on our laptop if we have to. So we're definitely trying to avoid saying names on the radio. Yeah. I mean, you can if it's like, I forget like let's say it's an emergency. Oh, we should come up with pseudonyms. Like James is being pulled over, you know. Like it's, you don't have time to think about it. Yeah. Okay. And we're well, not going to know each other's call signs. I guess you could say Alpha, this is Bravo, if yeah. you want to call that car. Okay, um, last resort, you know, runners. That'd be terrible if we have to get to that one. My name's out on the radios. I talked to Daryl a little bit. I think it's a wise idea to lock the dispatch door. I don't know, just in case. Okay. Well, the dispatch is next door, and no one's going to be here. Well, maybe someone will be here. Yeah, well, I'm so. talking about lock the door. I don't know if the police would come. I doubt it. But You're yeah. saying lock like EM's door. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, slide. The radio codes. Uh, Daryl, I guess, put this out like three weeks ago. Okay, 20 is where are you? What's your location? 23 is I'm going to. So you could just say like, 
Alpha 1, 23. The dispatch told you, or 25 as I'm, I'm there. Any questions on that? Okay, slide. Okay, this is optional. I like this, it's nice and easy. It's a salute report like the, the military. Okay, basically, like if you're recording something for video or on your notepad, you want to get how many officers are there, what they're doing, where it is, their badge numbers, uniform, all the times you can think of. Like, I got here at, at 1.30 and they arrested someone at 1.33 and they left the scene at 1.38. That way there's a good recording of what actually happened. And then equipment, like what the cops were using. Like, this would be good to put their license plates, maybe their, their car numbers, if they have a dog there. Last week they had a dog. That's English. English is the key. I mean, this is just an acronym to help you. You don't have to be using it. Okay, slide. The contingencies. I recommend you don't bring any contraband with you cop lock in. <laughs> okay, if you're assaulted by some random person, I think we should keep filming, stay calm, and be like, hey, I'm filming you, and I'm leaving. I'm leaving the area. Just tell them that. Yeah, the other thing is if you're going to carry contraband, there you go. Um, you should be respectful of who's driving the car. That's you know, true. Because yeah, you're off and on. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it. You should be. It should be okay with the driver uh, if you're going to be carrying weed or whatever. Or if we, if something ever occurred and you're carrying contraband, maybe you could be like, "Hey, that's mine. Take responsibility." I don't know. I don't know what the laws are in this state. But Okay, so no, they could slam everybody in the car, actually. So. Not if those people didn't have knowledge of it, and you could always easily play it off like they didn't have knowledge of it, and say, that's mine, they had no idea. Yeah. Uh, on assaulting and filming together, uh, one thing that's very difficult to do is to get good footage of someone assaulting you. It's like you have to be ready for it, almost. Because yeah, if okay. you're filming and someone's hitting you right here and your camera's here, you're not seeing anything. So if you feel like you're being approached, that's a good time to start zooming out and like make sure your camera's focused center on whatever's coming at you. Should you like hold it like this or like what do you recommend? Uh, back away if possible. Like you want to get their face, their right? Shot. So I don't know the best. Yeah, you want to make sure if someone's coming at you, you want to make sure they're in the frame, like isolated in the frame shown coming towards you because that's like the evidence that they're the one approaching you. Okay, a slide. We'll let Derek do this one <coughs> about being arrested. <laughs> you want the pointer? Uh, no, thanks. I won't need it. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. It's uh, good to be with you all today. My name is Derek J. Uh, I've been arrested in Keene a lot of times. So uh, if you don't know what happens, uh, I'll tell you all the parts that are out of your control because all the parts that are under your control are your choice. Uh, an officer... Once you're under arrest, an officer will come up to you and say, you're under arrest. He'll put you in handcuffs and take you to the back of a car. He'll drive you to the police station and ask you some questions. This is called processing. Um, he'll do fingerprints and what is also called booking. He'll ask you questions, your name, your last name, relatives, uh, phone numbers of those relatives. You don't have to give all of that information. You can sort of play dumb. Um, at least in my experience, so give as little information as possible uh, because when you Google search your name and uh, look up crime reports and stuff, your name will be pulled and I've seen my name on those sorts of things uh, with my brothers and sisters and I don't think that's nice to do to them. Um, they'll take your picture, so expect that. Um, most likely in the event of a cop locking type scenario you'll be released on your own personal recognizance which just means uh, you'll have a bail commissioner come in and that uh, bail commissioner uh, while you're waiting in a cell at the police station or uh, on a bench at the police station most likely will uh, you'll wait for that person to come in they'll sign over some paperwork saying yeah this is fine I'm the bail person this person is fine to go um, it's just a formality, it's paperwork, bureaucracy stuff. Um, but in the event that um, you are not uh, released on personal recognizance, I'll get into that later, what it's like being in jail and what sort of things you should expect there if you're, you say, arrested for having weed on you. Um, so, um, in the event of any arrest, have a plan. 
Uh, do you want bail to be posted if bail is an option? Um, what amount of bail? Say, if uh, bail is less than $2,000, I want to be out. If it's more than $2,000, leave me in. That sort of thing. And make sure that this is in writing somewhere where you've told someone that you trust who won't be getting arrested, tell dispatch. Um, leave a key with someone that you trust to your apartment, to your things, to your money. Um, leave a phone number for your job so that you can tell your so that your friend can tell your job that you're not going to be able to make it. These are things you know that I overlooked my first time, and thankfully there were people who called into J.C. Penney and said like, "Look, Derek's not going to make it." Um, if you have pets to take care of, same goes for them. Just have a contact person um, and a backup contact person just in case you and them get arrested. Um, who will your call be? Know this ahead of time because at jail or at the police station, you'll have the opportunity to make a call. They, you won't always get the opportunity and they won't offer it. You have to ask. So make sure that you say like, hey, I need my cell phone to make my call. It's uncommon that they, w they will give you their phone and let you use a phone book if you need to, but it's more common that you'll be able to use your own cell phone to call someone that you need to. That's what I did in the case where I'm, I called Cecilia from the police station when Officer Moore arrested me. Um, Which time? The, when with the bike. He was the, yeah. It's the only time he had me under arrest. Oh, okay. Other time I was being detained. You don't always get a call, right? So they'll, uh, they won't ask you, you have to ask them. Um, if you go to jail for any length of time, for example, on a drug possession, uh, you'll be brought to the jail. And it may not happen this way. You may be arrested for cop locking, they pat you down, bring you to the police station for processing. Oop, you got a ball on you. Now you're going to jail for a while. Um, you'll have to go and do the whole processing thing again. You've just done it at the police station. The police person will put you back in cuffs, put you in a car, bring you to the jail. They'll take you out through uh, like a little garage thing. A bunch of cops will shuffle you along, and then you'll be in the booking area that you've all seen in the Cheshire County Jail, where uh, it's like through two sets of windows. I think everyone's seen the pictures of uh, me, Kelly, and Ian all chilling out there. Um, they'll put you in a holding cell until you go through processing. So if you're there, this is what everyone knows, Sam Dodson was in there for a while for not answering some questions. They're the same questions you get at the police station, who's your mother, who's your father, are you under the influence of drugs and alcohol at this time, those types of questions. Um, once you process, you'll be brought to a place called R and S, and the, the journey there starts with a shower. So you'll be told you have to take off all your clothes, um, you'll have to strip naked uh, for the girls and the guys. I mean, every orifice is opened, you really have to expose yourself. It's humiliating and horrible. Um, after through that, you'll be you'll shower and you'll switch out your clothes for orange clothes, and you'll be put in solitary confinement for 24 to 72 weekday hours. The weekend doesn't count, so unfortunately, if you're arrested tonight, you're gonna have to start your clock at Monday, so the the weekend wouldn't count. Um, it's terrible. <laughs> That's, that's what happened with uh, Josh, unfortunately. Alright, so... You'll wait in solitary confinement for 24 to 72 hours while they have you under observation to determine where they should put you in the general population. Should they put you with the victimless criminals or the really hardcore murderers? And, like, where should they put you? Are you, uh, uh, are you sick right now? Do you need to um, detox? It's all that sorts of things. So, um, in this cell, you may not know this, I didn't know this my first time being in the jail, there's a button uh, with a little speaker that's always recording. So, in your cell, y y you're always being observed audibly. They can did they hear wire what you're saying. You without telling you? Yes, of course they did, yeah. Um, but they can do whatever they want. They're gods, and I'm, you know, just, I need to worship them. Uh, there, but their button you use goes like beep over to them and um, they'll be able to communicate with you. You don't need to push it uh, to communicate once you've got their attention, you can just talk to them. Um, but you're not allowed to talk to anyone out in that area and if you do, you'll be punished with more time. Um, you can have books during this time, so request that from the uh, officers on duty. And you'll also be fed three times, depending on the, the time of day. 7 a.m. is breakfast when the lights turn on. Noon is lunch, and 5 p.m. is always dinner. 
uh, you'll see a nurse on the second, <coughs> excuse me, on either the first or the second day. So even possibly just an hour after you're arrested and put into solitary, uh, you could be seeing the nurse um, for testing. Um, that's no m more than just like a basic uh, what you would expect from a doctor, like are you under the influence of drugs and alcohol, same basic questions about like basic medical history. Do not say yes. No matter what you are under, like don't, okay so these things can't be used against you, you can't be like if you say yeah I do heroin and I do coke and all these other drugs they're not going to slap you with drug charges. But if you say that you're under the influence of any drugs or alcohol, you're going to be put in a detox room and you don't want to be there. There's a video camera facing the toilet, They're, they watch you while you sleep, and everybody in the, the uh, cell block has a big open view window of you there for possibly the weekend, could be up to five days. You don't want that. So lie, even if you're under the influence of drugs or alcohol, say you're not. The other question to answer no to every time is have you ever or are you currently uh, considering suicide? Every, uh, most people have considered suicide at some point in their lives. Don't answer that question honestly. <laughs> Tell them no, you've never considered suicide and you're not now, you're totally fine and healthy. Uh, this is, these are ways to av avoid the observation room. Um, yeah, so don't say anything about depression. Uh, you'll be put into the observation room where everyone can observe you. Right. Okay. So, any questions? I have a comment. Uh, if you start getting That's if you start getting questioned, um, and you want the questioning to stop, usually the easiest way to get that to stop is to be able to just to start demanding your little air. Um, That's usually the easiest way, supposedly. Yeah, do you recommend that just? Staying silent, or what would you recommend? Yeah. Absolutely not. Uh, experientially, that is not the case. I have been uh, at the Live Free or Dance arrest, for example, when I was in the jail um, and okay. beginning processing. I said, I will not be answering your questions. I want to talk to my lawyer. And they said, You don't get to do that here. And I said, Well, what about my phone call? I expect, you know, I'll be able to call my lawyer with this phone call. You don't get to do that. And I said, well, I'm not answering any questions. They marched me right into the cell. So and I had to wait until I processed. They they would they refused to uh, get me a lawyer. I had to answer their questions. And first. if you really do need a lawyer, um, Seth Nipple has a option on his phone system where when you call his office after hours, it'll say press star or whatever to uh, be basically be forwarded to his cell phone. So if you do need a lawyer at you know midnight or whatever. Uh, Seth Nipple's line is probably a good one to have. I, mean, I have one speed dial on here, or not speed dial, but you know, in my phone book in case you know you ever need to. Right. So Seth Nipple's an option. You have something, David? Well, it's just one thing. Like, if they say you're under arrest, and like you don't just like go okay and like totally submit to it, they get you for freaking. Uh, they can get you for freaking. Uh, Resisting arrest that's, that's really a, easy. That's a great comment. Even though the statute, the RSA, regarding uh, resisting arrest says that um, verbal refusal cannot be construed as physical, uh, you know, uh, resisting. They they will charge you and find you guilty anyway. Experientially, that's been the case several times. Yeah. In my experience, yeah. it's it's true. Oh, okay, so I guess basically, if you don't we put yourself in handcuffs, you yeah, I'm, I'm I'll go quick. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone. Yeah, slide. Okay, I recommend you check your vehicle before you go out. Check your lights, all of your lights. You know, make sure uh, give your tag numbers to dispatch. Make sure you have registration. Insurance. I don't think you really need that in this state, but uh, and then make sure you get all your personal items. Okay, slide. Okay, I guess questions, comments. We'll just skip. That. I've got a comment. Okay. The reason that dispatch would like the tag numbers, the night that James got pulled over, if we would have had his tag number, we could have told him that he was about to get pulled over. Okay, slide. Yeah, and then last thing, drivers give your cell phone number and tag number to dispatch. And it's probably a good idea to make sure you have either Steve's number or Daryl's phone number, if you don't. Okay, well, I guess that's it. I'm going to go do check my car. And then